Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is the 1st of June and I want to start a new reading vlog. And this month is the Make Your Mistaker readathon, which I am participating in. I've already uploaded my TBR, so maybe you've seen it. I will link it at the end again, so you can go and check out my TBR. Here's a very quick glance at my books and... Today I'm going to start off with the one on top. So the thing with the Must Take a Read a Song is that you have to read the books in the order of the challenges. So my first challenge is to read a friend's pick and that is this book. I only know that it is set in the 1920s and it's a historical fiction um, by a German author. So yeah, we'll see how I get on with this today. Today is a holiday so I hope I can get a good start in this book. So from last month I still have my audiobook um, that I'm currently right in the middle of, that's uh, The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. <laughs> I forgot, but um, yeah, it's the last book in the Truly Devious series and I have five more hours to go with that, so I hope I can finish it, you know, within the first week or so, we will see. And we're also rereading uh, Two Towers by Tolkien right now, but that's something that just, you know, goes along because I'm reading that to my partner and that takes a little bit longer. So yeah, this is my first check-in. I hope I get a good chunk of reading done today and I will keep you updated. So yesterday I started this um, 1920s novel um, that is, you know, historical fiction. I got about 80 pages into it and it has 550 pages, which, wow, <laughs> did it really need to be that long? I was kind of surprised when I flipped back to the last page to check how long it is. And so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So, so far I'm not that far in and I can't really tell you a lot about it so I'm not gonna waste your time with it but I hope that I can fly through this quite quickly we'll see how the week goes but yeah so far hasn't really convinced me and then also today I found out that within the week the next book in the Lady Cheney series is going to be released and it's gonna be my Calamity Chain which I think will have some mm, western uh, kind of storyline. So I'm super excited. Uh, I will definitely get the audiobook as soon as I'm finished with the Maureen Johnson series. So yeah, that was a good addition to my day. And then also today I decided to redecorate my candle shelf down here and put out all my summer candles so I get inspired to burn them because I haven't really burned candles in, you know, months since we've gone into um, you know, staying at home, quarantine, stuff like that. So yeah, this is getting me real excited. So I just watched the um, Lord of the Rings reunion Zoom call and it was so good. <laughs> oh, I love, I love the movies. I love the books. And this was just so wholesome. <laughs> I feel really good now. The cat doesn't though. She barely feels good. You know, let's be real. But yeah, so far there wasn't any reading because, you know, I really had to watch that. <laughs> oh, no, I want to rewatch all the movies, which isn't helpful because I should be reading. So I'm about 160 pages into this book now, which means that I did not reach my reading goal yesterday. Um, right now, this is a one to two star book for me. I really dislike it and... I am really struggling whether I should DNF it. I never DNF books, but this is just so boring. <laughs> like, I feel like nothing has happened yet and the stuff that did happen that would have been somewhat interesting were definitely not shown. I really dislike the main character that we have in here. I don't even know what her name is. Lou. Yeah, she's called Louisa, but she calls herself Lou now because she's super cool. And then she has um, a friend who kind of gets a POV as well, which is also super weird. And um, that friend is actually a lesbian, which I think makes it a little bit more interesting. She also pretty much um, looks like me with her hair cut and she has my name, <laughs> which is um, a bit weird to read about. Um, but the thing is that right at the beginning of the book, this second character is in the middle of a very horrific um, situation 
and we did not get her point of view. And now that only boring things are happening, we suddenly have her point of view. I just don't understand that. Um, so yeah, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do with it. I will give it a chance today. But yesterday there was a scene that made me very confused because that main character that I don't like, Lou, she's in a relationship with an older man and that man is married as well and he just proposed that he and his wife would adopt her even though she's already 20 years old but he says like we make you 18 it's gonna be all right um and so his wife can take care of her because she uh, always wanted children but she can't have children and he can you know spend time with her all the time because he's in love with her and that is like the weirdest shit ever <laughs> that grossed me out so much like what <laughs> i would have you know grabbed all my stuff and run away i mean they are on an island when he does that but like i would not meet that man again and from the way this is written i think she will do it <laughs> if she does I can say that this will probably only be a hate read for me, so we'll see about that. But why? Why do German authors always do these kind of things? I don't understand. I just had dinner and I have a very needy cat right here. Yeah. She hates it when I turn on the camera. She's like instantly going away or pretending she doesn't do anything. She's very needy right now because um, she hasn't gotten her dinner yet because she hasn't even eaten her breakfast completely. So that's the fight we're having. So today's the 4th of June. Um, it's super dark outside right now. Um, but yesterday I managed to read um, almost to the halfway point of this book now. I am getting into the groove with it a little bit more. I still don't love it. Uh, there's a couple of things I really don't like. For example, I don't like how there's huge time jumps in this. Um, yeah, I told you about the weird storyline yesterday, so I don't have to repeat myself. But yeah, overall, um, still making my way through this, but I don't think I will love it in the end. So today is the 8th of June and I'm still reading this book. I can't even believe it. I have about 70 pages left so I hope that I can finish this book today. It is really getting on my nerves that I still haven't finished it but I don't know. I try to be a lot more active this weekend and I think it worked out quite well. And also, you know, the weekends where I have to edit my reading vlogs. Um, I do a lot more editing than on normal weekends. So that's my excuses, but if this is not finished by tomorrow, I will be so angry with myself. This has to go, so yeah. Also, I have not really listened to anything else um, from my audiobook, The Hand on the Wall. I think I have about two and a half hours left, maybe two. And so I hope that I can finish that within the next two or three days and finally let you know what I think about the whole trilogy. So yesterday I did it. I finally finished my first book for the Make Your Mistaker Taker readathon. So today is the 9th of June and I have finally finished this German book. It's called Tanz des Vergessens and it's set in the 1920s. And unfortunately, this book was a huge disappointment for me. I decided to give it two stars. The challenge for this was to read a friend's pick and the idea was that if you're an assassin, which is the path I'm going for in this readathon, you have to know whom to trust. And I must say, I learned that the hard way. Now, obviously, my friend who sent me this book didn't mean to give me a bad book. Um, the um, description on the back sounded really good and I really thought this would be a fun read. But unfortunately, it was absolutely horrible. It was very problematic. 
And even though the author writes in the back that one trope she uses, which I thought was quite disturbing, actually happened. So there is a, you know, true person who acted that way in this time. But still, I feel like she shouldn't have used that for her main character. Maybe just mentioned that for a side character if she really thought that was so interesting. But um, yeah, it was the whole trope I talked about with um, her moving in or being adopted rather by her um, by her lover who was a married man so they can be together while the wife was living with them <laughs> as the uh, adoptive mother <laughs> which I thought was so weird and yeah it seems like some person in the 1920s actually did that but still I feel like I don't need to read a book about that also what happened after that was also very problematic in my opinion. Like, for example, she... Um, I, I don't think you will read this book, so I'm just gonna spoil it. She shoots the man she loves um, in, you know, the final part of this book because she's on drugs uh, or basically she's coming down from drug use and uh, not feeling that well and she thinks the gun is a toy and what better way to try if something is a toy than to uh, shoot someone with it <laughs> and so that in uh, that in itself was very disturbing but the more most disturbing thing is that that is the event that finally brings this couple together. So after shooting him and after trying to kill herself, when she was rescued by like completely random people who took her into their home for weeks to, you know, get her well again, she, you know, shows up at the door of this guy she just shot who survived because he just was lucky. And they're finally ready to tell each other that they love each other. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? So yeah, I did not like this book, unfortunately. Um, I think two stars is a fair rating because there are some interesting things in here. Um, you know, dealing with the whole um, Nazi uprising that started in the 1920s. And I think a lot of people don't really think that it was so prevalent already in the 20s. And I also like reading about um, Berlin. It's just a city that I like being in, and so reading all the, you know, all the, all the stations of the underground um, and stuff like that. It just gave me a cozy feeling. But yeah, that's all the good things I can say about this book. Also, no, there's one more thing I want to say. The second main character, who has my name as well, <laughs> um, is a lesbian in this time. And if this book would have been about her. I would have loved it. I don't know why she's just used as this weird device of like a normal person who's trying to check in on her really weird, naive, stupid friend all the time. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just so sad that um, this this character who would have been so interesting, like whenever their path um, do not cross for a while, she completely disappears and you don't hear from her. And then she just, you know, you get her perspective back as soon as their paths cross again. And yeah, I would have loved to read more about that second character, but she was just there as a device and not as a character on her own. And I hate this book for this. It would have been so interesting. Oh, well. Yeah, as I said, I learned it the hard way. You can't always trust your friends. <laughs> Even though, obviously, my friend didn't know that this book was bad. Um, she just read the back and thought it sounded like something I would love. So, yeah, that's that. And then last night I started Ninth House by Libra Dugo. I'm going to read this for the dark cover. You know, as an assassin, you have to know your way around um, dark places. So really excited for this. I'm also reading this for the Dark Academics book club. And the first 20 pages really sucked me in. So I hope that this will keep up the momentum. So far, I'm loving it. So yeah, we'll let you know more about that soon. And then finally, I only have an hour left in my audiobook, The Hand on the Wall. And I'm so close to finding out who the killer in the, you know, now timeline is. And I really hope that it's not one person, but I feel like it would be that person. And if it is that person, I will be so disappointed. So we'll see about that. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program. 
So, as you may have heard, I have finished The Hand on the Wall today. It's the 10th of June. This book does not count towards my Make Your Myth Taker um, TBR. It was just a book I had kind of left over and I don't usually put my audiobooks into these kind of readathon TBRs because I like to just listen to them on my own speed whenever I'm in the mood. Mm, the Hand on the Wall is the last part of the Truly Devious series, so in this one we get all the answers that we wanted for three books. Um, I must say it was a good book, I enjoyed it. I think that the second and the third book are better than the first one. The first one was quite disappointing, but the other two stayed in that same realm, I would say, but they just made it they, they were just written a little bit better, they gave you a little bit more information, a little bit more of a closure at the end, obviously the last book a lot of closure. I heard many people say that they don't like how the romance plays out in the end and I totally agree. <laughs> um, I would have wished for something different as well. So I think if the next book comes out and it's not a trilogy again but just a new case that is solved within one book, I would pick it up. I'm not quite sure whether I would read it if it's another like duology or trilogy because I just feel like there's not enough happening in these books to you know really make it worth reading more than one book about it. I must say my favorite character is probably Nate. Um, he's great. I really enjoyed him and I also did like who the um, you know evil guy in the end was or the evil girl or whatever. Um, the evil person <laughs> in the end was um, I was happy that it ended that way even though I think it was the most predictable way and I thought that you know there might be a twist there at the end um, to make it more interesting but it wasn't um, but yeah as I said since this was the outcome that I wanted I wasn't you know mad about not having a twist at the end and one of the characters I actually really liked being the evil person. So yeah, I would say overall if you enjoy kind of YA books and you don't mind if there's not a lot of stuff happening in a book, then these are probably good fun. I must say I enjoyed the past timeline so much more and I felt for the past characters so much more. and. For me, the book was kind of done when we knew what happened to Alice. <laughs> so yeah, and there's still a whole lot going on after that. So yeah, um, I just realized that that I felt for Alice so much more than for the other characters because she really was, she was the one that, you know, was the most innocent of all the victims in these books. So I really cared about her a lot. Last night I also made it to page 42 in Nine South and still I really like the beginning of this. Super intrigued and I'm glad that tonight I think I have a little bit more time to read so I hope that maybe I can make it to page 100 or so. That would be cool so keep you updated on that one. Hey guys, um, so today is the 15th of June and I wanted to give you a quick update. I have about 100 pages left in Ninth House and I must say I love this book a lot. Like this pulled me in from the first page. I think it's super interesting and I am taking my time with it because this is a book that I enjoy reading at my own pace and I don't ever look at you know how many pages I've read in a day or something like that because I'm just so captivated by that story. So yeah, I am a little bit slow with this, but as I said, I have about 100 pages left, so I hope I can finish it tonight or maybe tomorrow, um, and then this will be done. Obviously, I'm much slower than I thought it would be, but um, I think the rest of the books that I definitely want to read for the Myth Taker um, readathon are shorter, so they will fly by a little bit more. But yeah, as I said, this is a fantastic book for me personally. I really enjoy it and I must say Libor Dugo has become a autobi author for me so yeah that's really exciting because I wasn't quite sure how I would feel about this um, series but yeah I'm a little bit scared for it to end because I don't have the sequel. 
So apart from that, I listened to a little bit more than two hours of On the Come Up Now by Angie Thomas. This is my audiobook that I am listening to right now. And again, I do love this audiobook a lot so far. Um, I feel like no, it's hard to tell. It's been a while since I read um, The Hate You Give and I waited that time you know, for a reason, because I was a little bit afraid that I would compare the two too much if I read them like back to back, because I read The Hate You Give very late as well, like everyone had read it already. Um, but yeah, I really, really love it so far. I love the rap aspect of it, even though um, I don't listen to rap music and I don't know, you know, what a good rap is. <laughs> so I can't really say whether, you know, the bits in the book are actually good or, you know, but... I'm just, um, you know, ignoring that I don't know a lot about it and I just assume that it is good, at least for the world that the character lives in. But apart from that, I really feel with her and I think I, while I enjoyed the more dramatic event in The Hate You Give, um, I do like that in this book the racism so far is way more subtle and still shows how horrible it is. And so yeah, I enjoy that a whole lot <laughs> and I can't wait to listen to more of it. But that's my update. So I hope I will talk to you soon with some reading updates. So I just finished Ninth House. Um, the ending reminds me a lot of that one um, Sabrina, um, season finale on Netflix with like you know let's go to hell and get my boyfriend back and I don't like what happened to that show after that <laughs> so I'm not sure how I will like the rest of the series but this book is some crazy shit and I've really enjoyed it I think I will sleep on it and let you know more tomorrow okay so Last night I finished Ninth House. That means that I have reached step two to becoming an assassin because now I know my way around the dark places. And I gave this book 4.5 stars. I think it's pretty damn good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And I've been thinking whether my mistaker character wouldn't be quite similar to Alex Stern, which is the main character of this book. Because um, I'm opting for the assassin career and Alex isn't really an assassin. She's more like a kind of spy, <laughs> but it's hard to tell. And she has, you know, some, um, how do you say in English, skeletons in her closet. So I would say it kind of fits, like not 100%, but it kind of fits. And I mean, I had a lot of trouble with my first book. So I said that, you know, I find it hard to know whom to trust. And that's definitely something that um, would, you know, fit Alex quite well. And then with this one, I had such a successful read. So, you know, I know my, pl uh, my way around dark places quite well. And I think that's true for Alex too. Um, the next thing is the secret book that I'm about to start. So are you ready for the big reveal? That is my secret book. So the English title of this is The Last Girl by Nadia Murat. And she was a woman who was um, actually captured by ISIS and taken, you know, into kind of prison, something like that. Um, and tortured and stuff like that. So this is a memoir. I'm really excited to read this. Um, I love reading about these kind of horrible things that happen in the world, which is weird, I know, but I love memoirs about that kind of stuff and especially about Middle Eastern countries and women in Middle Eastern countries. So I think this will be a very good read and a very important read. So I'm very excited to read this book. Um, and since I kept that secret for so long, you know, I think that would um, fit Alex quite well. She's a very secretive person. And um, yeah, and then there's this whole aspect of her being able to see Grace. So that would fit the kind of more um, 
oracle vibe that I want to go with if I have finished the assassin path. So yeah, maybe my um, myth taker character will be Alex Stern in the end. I will think about that a little bit more. So this book, I really enjoyed it. Um, I read this also for the um, Dark Academics book club, which will have a meeting right at the end of the month. And I'm really excited to discuss this. I think some things that surprised me about this book is the commentary on um, sexual violence on campuses um, and also violence against girls. There is a beautiful um, part in this book where she talks about how whenever a girl dies, the society will find a way to reason with that, to say, well, she had it coming because of blah, blah, blah. And I love that so much. I actually read it aloud to my partner because I loved it so much. Um, because she's saying like, you know, if you're like a loner, they're going to say you were depressed and, um, you know, uh, that uh, you were failing in school and that's why maybe you took your own life. And um, if you were a social butterfly, they would say that um, you were drinking away your problems and that's why you took your own life. And um, when you are, you know, a great A student and very good at what you're doing, they would say that you're a perfectionist and killed you. And as I said, I just loved that part of this book. It was such such a good, such a good little paragraph. Um, but there were other things too, and I think um, there are problematic things in here, and I think that Alex knows that she does problematic things, and you can you know, see that from the way she talks about stuff. But yeah, I like this <laughs> and I liked it even more than I thought I would. And so I'm very happy that I read this for the readathon. And yeah, I already said that um, last night, but I'm not quite sure how I will feel about the second book. And um, I don't know if this is going to be a duology or a trilogy or whatever, um, but you kind of see where it will be going in the future. Mm, and I don't know how I feel about that yet, but this book on its own I really liked. So tonight I will start my third book for the Myth Taker Readathon and just take you along with that one. So yesterday I started the um, memoir of Nadia Murat and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. I'm now on page 90, I think. Um, so far... Um, it is hard to read, but I think it will get much worse from, you know, the synopsis on the back. Um, this is a very interesting book about an area of the world that I don't know much about. Um, and it focuses on uh, Yazidi people and their position in Iraq. And if you don't know who Nadia Murad is, that is the woman that Trump asked um, where her family is after she said that they were killed by ISIS and that he also asked, um, or who he also asked, um, why she won the um, Nobel Prize for peace. <laughs> I don't know what's it called in English, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that is the woman that wrote this. Who wrote this book? I don't know today. I can't speak English. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, it's so far a very interesting read. So this is about a small village in um, the north of Iraq, which is, um, you know, which only has Yazidi people and these are not Muslim people and ISIS declared them, you know, uh, basically non-humans because uh, according to them they are praying to the devil and so um, it is allowed in ISIS terms it is allowed to kill them and to enslave them and to uh, try to break uh, especially the women of this religion through uh, um, sexual violence. And so this is what this book is about. And so far, um, it's been mostly about, you know, the situation of the village before ISIS and that it's just very far away from all the other stuff that happened in Iraq and that it oftentimes took a very long time um, until the events really hit that little village. Um, and I think that's very interesting and it just shows you, you know, that kind of w way of life that isn't 
touched that much by the state that um, this little area is in because it is just very closed off and these people um, stay very much together and how that um, slightly changed with the changes in Iraq, for example. Yazidi people were allowed to be part of um, the police, uh, for example, on airports and stuff like that, and how that changed also their, um, their perception of their country, but also their uh, opportunities that they had, because before that they were basically just farmers and how they got um, education after those changes and stuff like that. So that at first it looked really good for these people, but then they became um, the scapegoats um, because they were the easiest um, people to attack, basically, by uh, the ones who were put out of power by the American um, military in Iraq. So yeah, that's this book and so far I am enjoying it. Um, I'm a little bit terrified what will happen next. Um, right now we're at a point where this little village is completely surrounded by ISIS and they're basically held captive and they were told that whenever someone tries to leave they will be killed and that is obviously a very horrible situation and I think right now at the point that I'm at this has lasted for two weeks and they just don't know what to do. They don't have weapons. They don't have, you know, big allies like the Americans who will save them. It's just a small village um, surrounded by enemies. So yeah, definitely tough read. Today is the 19th of June and yesterday I made it to page 180, no, 38 in um, this autobiography by Nadia Murad. And I must say that um, this part that I read yesterday um, kind of like um, right between the first and the second part is like probably the hardest thing I've read in a very very long time. It was so hard to read about um, how this small village was basically completely erased by ISIS. It was so hard to read and I do want to keep reading today but I also feel like work has been a lot today and I don't feel ready. <laughs> to get into this emotionally right now so yeah I'll try to read a little bit more tonight but um, I hope that I can really focus on this on the weekend because I feel like I need a little bit more brain space for this book. So it's the 21st of June and I just woke up from a nap but I wanted to let you know that I finished um, The Last Girl by Nadia Murat and I really enjoyed this book. Um, it in my opinion, does many things wrong. I decided to give it four stars because um, with some of these kinds of memoir style books, I still feel like I can learn or connect with it on a personal level. I feel like I learned a lot of facts from this book um, and now I do know a lot more about um, Iraq and especially um, Yazidi people, but I don't really feel like um, I had a lot of like personal development because of that and so I think four stars is a fair rating for this book I really enjoyed it I would highly recommend everyone pick it up and um, yeah it just shows how different you know different things um, in war can affect different people on many different levels and obviously it's horrific what it's done to the CD women and I think everybody should know about this, so I'm glad this book exists so people can educate themselves. And yeah, it is hard to read at times. Um, there were a couple of chapters that I found it incredibly hard to read. Um, but she does a good job at, you know, not going into too much detail. So um, as someone who has dealt with like sexual assaults and stuff like that. I didn't find this to be too triggering um, but um, you know you have to see for yourself if you can read something like that if you are triggered by you know stuff like that because that's um, a huge part in the middle of the book um, but yeah it's just overall horrific what happened there and as I said, I think it's very important that we educate ourselves. But with having finished this book, I now achieved um, my kind of secrecy thing in the path of the assassin. Because, um, 
yeah, I grabbed this book secret from you for a while now and did not mention it on my TBR. So I guess I did quite well on that one. So now the last book I need for the Assassin Path is My Creek Read. So we're now going for a quick and clean kill, I guess. <laughs> um, I decided to go with this graphic novel, so I think I can finish that tomorrow probably. Um, I'm not feeling too well today, so I will start this now and see how far I can get into it, but I'm like not pushing myself to finish it, but it looks like a super fast read. And I think this is set in Iran, so I'm not moving too far away from Iraq, but I think the themes will be quite different. So I still feel pretty bad. Um, I actually went out to get some um, medication for my headaches because it's not fun <laughs> and I really don't have time for that. But yesterday I managed to read the first 60 pages in this graphic novel and I have about exactly 100 pages left. So I hope that I will fly through this now and finish it and um, that would be the last part for my assassin path. So I finished Persepolis by Mayana Satrapi. Satrapi. Mm, this was an interesting read. I kind of read these two books out of order. I should have read this one first and then The Last Girl because um, I'm kind of going like backwards in time now because this um, is set before and during the war between Iran and Iraq and then the last girl is set after and this is set in Iran and the last girl is set in Iraq. So um, this deals with similar topics but also different. I did like um, this graphic novel. I think I would give it four stars as well. I always have a hard time with gra graphic novels and I've talked about this before that I would always rather read an, you know, by autobiography memoir than a graphic novel memoir because I just feel like some things just don't touch you in the same way. Still I think the kind of storytelling that we get in here is great. Um, I think that the author really managed to get us into her head and take us to that place and that time and I really liked that this book shows how when you're a child you just you know you see things quite black and white and that happens to her as well and she switches her side uh, quite a bit because she's obviously influenced by her family and her country and the things that are happening there and I think it's so interesting that she decided to keep that in, even though, you know, people might say, wow, you can't think this or you can't think that. Um, but I feel like it's very appropriate for a book like that to show this. And I also felt like the author dealt with her privilege quite well. She's from a well-educated family. Her um, family was once... Um, connected to the Shah, I think. So they were quite a well-situated family in Iran. Um, obviously there has been so much turmoil and um, now that doesn't really apply anymore, but still this family is able to give her money to get her a good education, even though she's a girl and stuff like that. And she does deal with that quite well, I think. And I think this also makes the story easier to understand because her way of life might be similar to what we have experienced in our, you know, 
like early teen years. This ends when she's 14 and there is a second part, but in my libraries they only had this first part unfortunately, so I will have to see whether I can find the second part somewhere to read it. Um, yeah. I enjoyed this. I would highly recommend it if you're interested in Iran. Um, I just thought that this would be set in a more recent time. This is set during the 80s, so I didn't know that. But it's interesting. And yeah, I would highly recommend. But you've probably all heard about this before, so I'm not telling you anything new. So now with this read, I managed to finish the Assassin Pass um, and the Mythtaker Readathon. And I had also gotten a few books for the Oracle Path. And I think I want to at least try to read one more book this month. I have about a week left. And that book is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I have seen, you know, all all my favorite youtubers read this already and i've stayed away i have not watched their videos i have seen a couple of goodreads um reviews but i haven't really read them or anything like that so i know that a lot of people are disappointed by this book but i want to try to go into this as blind as possible and this is quite a long book how many pages is this like 500 and some pages um I did not expect that when I ordered it. I thought it would be much shorter, but we will see. I will start this book tonight and I'll keep you updated. So yesterday I made it to page 60 in um, the Hunger Games prequel. I I will not be able to say the name. Um, I do like it so far. I was very happy that we got uh, Tigris as a character from the first page, which I'm very excited about because that was always a character that I wanted to know more. And I'm just a little bit afraid that this book won't go far enough to really understand her. But we'll see. I'm just glad she's here for now. And I do think that... Um, the picture that gets painted is a very different from what we would expect after reading the um, Hunger Games series. And this just shows how the capital was kind of destroyed after the war as well. And I think that if you just read the traditional books, you would think they were always, you know, better off. And But obviously this is a system that really depended on the districts and having war with the districts would have some major problems for this world. So I think that this is quite realistic so far. And I also really like, um, what's her name, Lucy? Is it Lucy? Oh, I'm so bad with names. Yeah, Lucy Gray. Um, sorry, I forgot the name for a second. Um, I love that even though so far it's not that explored, but we get um, some diversity in the districts as well. And I love that idea that before this all happened, there were, you know, like ethnic differences and I don't know if this is what this is supposed to be because right now it's quite vague, but I understood it as, you know, Lucy being from an, a different ethnic group that was traveling around and being like, um, you know, singers and artists and like more maybe liberated people. That's what it sounds like. So I'm really interested to see how this is explored because so far I feel like the Hunger Games series has been quite a uh, non-diverse space um, because especially District 12 always looked very samey to me like all the people were basically the same that same eye color same hair color and yeah I'm just interested to see how this is explored more and her character so far is very fascinating and I think she's gonna die at the end so I don't know how I feel about that but yeah, so far I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would after hearing the first reviews, so we'll see. So yesterday I made it to page 172 in the Hunger Games prequel, 
I'm still enjoying it. Um, yesterday I was thinking about how maybe the story would work better if we had not Snow's perspective, but just, you know, maybe another capital person. I do enjoy the switch of the perspective and also the timeline. So I think that this book definitely adds to the world. But there's a couple of things that I don't know how they will match up. And I'm um, interested to see how that works out um, because this is um, the 10th uh, Hunger Games. So it would be the first like Jubilee or whatever they call it. And this, had not, this has not been mentioned so far. And I think in the Hunger Games, they, they say that, you know, the challenges were picked, you know, right when they started the Hunger Games. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to see whether this will, you know, play a role in this book at all, um, if we figure out, because we can see that the Hunger Games are not that well thought out in the beginning. And I guess that, you know, a lot of the things we learn in the Hunger Games series are not actually the truth, but just um, propaganda, what the people are supposed to think. So that does make sen sense. Oh, I can't talk. <laughs> so yeah, I am enjoying it, but I'm also wondering whether um, Suzanne Collins made the right decision with using Snow as a main character, because it is hard to see where he goes from here, how he becomes the man we meet in the Hunger Games series. So yeah. I don't know about that, but I'll keep on reading. So I just um, started part three in this book and up until now I was hooked. Like I wanted to know what happens to Lucy and wow, <laughs> I really felt like, you know, being in the Hunger Games again, which basically is what happened. Um, but now we're starting into a kind of new direction and I have no idea where this is going. So I don't know how I feel about that. I was kind of like, what the f at the end, so we'll see, we'll see. I really hope I like the rest of this book too. So today's the 30th of June and I have to finish this book, but I still have like about 120 pages left because I didn't really do well this weekend. Um, so yeah, we will see. Um, I'll let you know in the last clip of the vlog part if I managed this tonight. Um, I am hopeful, but I'm also very slow with this book, so I don't know if I can do it. We will see. But yeah, June's almost over. So, wow, where did it go? So, I did it. I just finished it. And it was weird. <laughs> so I liked it for the most part. But the last, like, 150-200 pages were weird. And the last 20 pages, very weird. And yeah, so what's the message? He was an asshole the whole time, basically. Um, I will gather my thoughts and let you know more in my wrap-up part. That will follow right now. So, welcome back to the wrap-up part of this video. I'm now going to tell you all about the books I finished in June and, you know, how I liked them and stuff like that. Now, the first book I finished in June and also the worst book I have read this year so far was this German book called Tanz des Vergessens by Heidi Rehn. And this is a story set mainly in the 1920s after the First World War. And it starts out in Munich and then later transitions into the area of Berlin. And it follows a girl called Lou. And Lou loses her fiance during the last couple of struggles in Munich after the war. And then she is basically spiraling down making the worst decisions ever, being a brat, and stuff like that. So, I hated this book. I gave it two stars. I gave it two stars. Um, I can tell you what the good things were. <laughs> um, one good thing is that we get a second point of view that is Judith, and she is a lesbian, or at least she's dating woman, but she says that she's not really interested in anything but women, so I would say she's a lesbian. And she's also kind of um, a journalist and stuff like that, so I found her point of view to be very interesting. And if this book had followed her, I would have even liked it, I guess. Um, 
Apart from that, I like that I learned a couple of new things about that time period in Germany. But, you know, that does not outweigh all the bad that happened in this book. I talked about this in many vlog parts, so if you're interested, I would guide you to that. And just believe me that this book is truly just BS. Then the next book I finished was my audiobook, and that was The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. It's the last book in the Truly Devious series, um, in the original trilogy, because I think she's coming out with a new book next year. But this is the conclusion to this case all about the Truly Devious letter and the disappearance of the wife and child of a founder of a very prestigious school in the 1930s, as well as um, a couple of murders that are happening in that school in you know modern day times. So we follow Stevie who um, is interested in crime and she wants to solve crime when she grows up. So she gets into this very prestigious school. It's quite elite but it's not for like the wealthy but for people with very bright ideas and that, that are just kind of special in a way. And so in the first book, we follow Stevie into this school, but, um, you know, while she's making great friends and is having a really good time there, there's, um, you know, stuff going on and there's murder and there's mayhem. And this last book um, is the conclusion. So this is the book where you get all the answers. The other two books just basically build up to this one. Um, there are a couple of things I like about the series and a couple that I don't. In the end, I gave this book 3.5 stars. I liked the 1930s timeline so much more. I was really invested in it and I liked the characters and I liked the drama, the intrigue, um, all the secrets and stuff like that. But with the modern day timeline, I just had my <laughs> issues. And for most um, of the time in this third book, I didn't really know what was going on, um, how Stevie got to her conclusions. It got just really wild with a map and stuff like that. And you don't really know who made some of these things that Stevie then uses to uncover what happened. And I just got a little bit confused because in the end, it just felt like a lot of people knew what actually happened and could leave those clues. But, you know, it was just weird. Um, I liked the conclusion at the end. I was quite happy with the way it turned out. It's not very surprising. <laughs> so I, you know, I had an, a, a hunch who would be the killer in the end. And I was right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I. You know, people have talked about the romance. The romance is not good at all. <laughs> so I'm very, um, you know, on the fence because I feel like I wouldn't read the next book when it comes out. Um, on the other hand, I would be interested in seeing how that romance plot develops. Um, just to know how it develops. Not because I'm invested or interested in this romance, but just because I would like to know the author if uh, Maureen Johnson kind of reacts to people not being a fan of the romance, but we'll see. Then the next book I finished was Ninth House by Libor Dugo. I read this for the Dark Academics book club and I really enjoyed this book. I decided to give it 4.5 stars, but uh, there is the whole book club discussion video up now. Um, I can try to link the video below uh, if I remember. But um, yeah, the discussion was quite negative um, and I thought that was kind of sad because it took on that kind of snobbish feel very quickly for me of like, well, but this is not well written and this is not this and this is not that and it's just not, it's not just not, you know, literature. <laughs> and um, while I do think that this book is not perfect, I totally needed this book this month because, you know, Things have been crazy. We've been living in a crazy world and I felt like this was just so easy to read and it flowed quite nicely and I loved, I loved the magical world even though some people were confused by it. I don't really understand like, yeah, we don't know every single thing but I felt like most of it I could understand and I just loved the concept of these ghosts that exist in this world. And just, you know, the, the, the details, like, that they don't like, um, you know, areas uh, where 
there is no one, so you will never find a ghost on a graveyard at night because they don't like these kind of places. They want to be um, in popular places, basically. So yeah, I really, really like that about this book. But basically, we follow Alex. Um, her real name is Galaxy, which I thought was kind of fun, <laughs> kind of weird. Um, I also liked that she has... Um, uh, I don't know where her grandma was from, but some kind of Latinx, you know, background, but also Jewish background. And I actually went and researched that a little bit because honestly, I did not know anything about that. And it seems that they have that kind of language that is, you know, a mixture of Spanish and I don't know, Hebrew? No, no probably not Hebrew, but like... You know, I don't know how all these languages are called in English, but it's very interesting. And even though that, um, even though this book could have done a better job at exploring that, I still found it interesting that it was in there at all. And I could, you know, research it on my own and find out a little bit of stuff about it. Um, but yeah, Alex is, you know, a former drug addict and she's not in a good place. And the reason for that is that she can see the, these kind of ghosts. And um, one day she is asked to come to Yale to study there um, on a free ride if she joins this kind of secret society called the Ninth House, who's there to watch over all the other secret societies and their rituals so nothing can go wrong. And because she can see these ghost, ghosts, it's very helpful because normal humans have to take a very um, dangerous potion to be able to do that and she obviously doesn't have to do that and so she's basically in Yale now watching over these um, secret societies but then things go wrong obviously and the one thing I really did not like about this book is the ending it was horrible <laughs> was really bad. Um, while I felt like some things were revealed and that were already a little bit hinted at, um, I just don't know if I want to read the next book in this series because I just really did not like the way the ending turned around. Um, so yeah, we'll see about that. But it was just such a fun read that you know my brain could totally turn off and I was just so pulled into this magic system and I just really enjoyed reading it so yeah enjoyment level rating there. Next up I finished The Last Girl by Nadia Murat and this was a memoir or this is a memoir about Nadia Murat and if you remember there was this girl um, at the White House talking to Trump um, telling him that her whole family was killed by ISIS and then like one minute later he asked her where her family was. <laughs> that is Nadia Murad. <laughs> so um, I didn't know that. I actually found out while I was reading the book that this was her. Um, but this is a book I had my eye on for a while um, because I really like these kind of memoirs like in the reign of Malala and stuff like that. So this was an obvious choice for me. Now Nadia Murad is a ECD person and she grew up in Iraq in a very remote place that is quite close to the Iranian border I think. There's a map in here, yeah, Iranian border. And so um, one day her village where she grew up was surrounded by ISIS and they um, killed all the men of that village basically and took all the women hostage and also the children um, trying to brainwash the children to become ISIS soldiers and selling the women as sex slaves basically and giving them out as prizes for um, you know people that they wanted to give a prize to in ISIS and so this is a very horrible story obviously um, but I did really like the way it was told. I think that Nadia Murad handled it very well in a way that even though, you know, <laughs> this sounds very triggering and very dramatic and very horrible, um, 
she can write it in a way that you absolutely know what's going on but it's not so devastating that you know it turns into some kind of torture porn or something so i felt like she really walked that line quite well and there were a couple of chapters in here that were like the hardest thing i had to read in a very long time obviously um there's one chapter where she switches the perspective to i think a brother or but well, her family tree is a little bit confusing she has some half brothers and some brothers and then also like the um, husbands of her sisters and whatever so one person from her family who was male and she shifted him um, the the point of view to him and told um, in one chapter what happened to him um, and that was such a wow chapter it was really not great to read and i really had to take a break after it and be like okay <laughs> we read that we have to think about it now um but yeah i think um she does a very very good job at portraying you know what her childhood was like and growing up in that remote village and then the anxiety with being surrounded by the enemy and i think that you know they were surrounded for like two or three weeks and um, people were trying to get help from the neighboring villages and from the US and stuff like that so um, they really just were stuck there and they couldn't do anything they didn't have any weapons um, they were completely defenseless and they had no idea what was going to happen and I feel like in a situation like this with a deadly virus and <laughs> all of us being stuck at home um, we can relate to this even a little bit more I think so yeah as I said I just really like the way she portrayed her whole life and um, just gave enough context and then also walked that line between you know showing what kind of terrible things happened but not being too explicit and not being hopeless basically so I don't know if I did a good job talking about this, but I gave it four stars and I would highly recommend it. Especially if you don't want to be Trump and ask her where her family is. And then the next book I finished was uh, Persepolis by Marianne Satrapi. And this is only the first part. There is a second part as well, but they only had this one at my library, so I only took this one out. This um, focuses on her childhood growing up in Iran in the 70s and maybe 80s I don't know exactly when this stopped but it's kind of funny because I basically read these books out of order because both of these books um, you know are set in quite a similar area <laughs> but this one is before the war between Iraq and Iran and this one or it starts before the war and this one is definitely set after that so yeah I was kind of going backwards in time which was funny but um, this is a very interesting book as well this is a graphic novel in black and white and as you can see on the cover um, it deals with you know kind of Islam and um, you know having to uh, cover up your body as a woman and stuff like that and the interesting thing is that when Mayana was born, Iran was quite a progressive state, but then um, there was a revolution and during that revolution religious more extremist groups took over and they made kind of this from a western standpoint um, step back, um, you know, where suddenly girls couldn't go to the same schools with boys anymore and girls had to cover up and yeah you know what you would imagine when you see this cover basically um i really really liked the perspective of this book because we're following a child and i love that the author didn't try to cover things up or make her better than she was. She's portraying herself as a child who's very interested in her world, but at the same time kind of forms her opinion quickly and um, 
you know, also goes in reverse and stuff like that. And, you know, one day saying this and the other being like, no, I've never said that, which is quite a normal thing to do for children, you know, um, because they just can't see the complexities of their world yet. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't seem to ever get out of this state. But I felt like for this perspective, it really worked. Um, there were also some very, very horrible moments in this book, especially at the halfway point. I really had to take a break there um, because it's just it's just horrible what happens to people in this world. Um, but it's, again, a very interesting read. I'm not the biggest fan of graphic novels. I've said that before. I, I would rather read a you know, memoir instead of a graphic memoir. But I still felt like I learned a lot from this about a country I didn't really know anything about before going into this. And yeah, that was great. And I will try to get a hold of the second part of this. Maybe I can find it in the library or I'll have to find another way. But I really want to know what happens to her afterwards because I think at the end of this she's leaving for Austria. And yeah. I'd be interested to see um, that perspective on, you know, migrating to Europe um, as a young teen. So four out of five stars. Again, I really, really enjoyed this book. Now this completed my myth taker path to become an assassin because I took part in this readathon this month. So that's why I read all of these books and I got a assassin character out of that and then I originally wanted to give that character also some um, oracle traits so the next book I then picked up and it's the last book I managed to finish was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and I read this as a five-star prediction book I had a hard time avoiding spoilers for so long. I had already seen people disliking this book and at first I didn't really understand. Um, when I went into this book, I really enjoyed it at first. It was kind of similar to Ninth House that, you know, I just needed a book to really pull me in. And The Hunger Games is just such a fascinating concept. And I also really lo loved um, looking back and seeing, you know, kind of how it all started. And this book focuses on the 10th Hunger Games. And I think just seeing it from, you know, the <laughs> kind of mechanics of the Hunger Games, it was super interesting to see how certain things developed and that, you know, this was not the huge spectacle from the beginning, but that it just developed over the years. And I always find it so interesting because we have that a lot when people say, well, but that's our traditions, that's our culture. And then you take a closer look and you see, well, the way it's done has been there for like maybe 30 years, but before that was completely different and things are just constantly changing and evolving. And I love seeing that with this book as well, because obviously the Hunger Games are presented as something that, you know, ha had been going on for, over 70 years in the original trilogy and you get that sense that it's always been the same but this book kind of breaks with that and says no 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 <laughs> things were very different at the beginning <laughs> and I must say I did enjoy that apart from that what I did not enjoy and a lot of people did not, not enjoy this is that this is from the perspective of President Snow <laughs> as a teenager and I think this book would have done so much better if it was not. But I don't know why this was the choice Suzanne Collins made. Um, it doesn't make sense at all. Um, for the most part, you're just confused because this guy doesn't add up with no at all. And what just at the end, <laughs> let's just quickly talk about the epilogue without spoilers, obviously. But she made the choice that in the epilogue switching to calling him Snow instead of his first name Coriolanos and you're supposed to think that with this switch suddenly he is the Snow from the trilogy and obviously there's still like 60 more years to go like what <laughs> and yeah I just 
Just imagine how old he is in the Hunger Games trilogy. Wow. I, I never considered this. Wow. Whatever. <laughs> um, I did like uh, the female character we get to see here, Lucy Gray. Um, she's also from District 12 and I have seen some kind of conspiracy theories that she is connected to Katniss, but um, you know, you can you just read it and decide for yourself what you think. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Um, I did enjoy her, <laughs> but as soon as the Hunger Games were over, I was expecting a completely different storyline from what I got. And that was a mistake. <laughs> like everyone, everything that's happening after the Hunger Games part, so I think it's the complete third part of this book. It's just a mistake. <laughs> because I wanted Lucy to stand up and be like, well, I played y'all because I had to win these fucking games. And she didn't. <laughs> and I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I really want someone to sit down and just, you know, scratch the whole third part and just give Lucy Cray justice because she did not deserve this <laughs> and yeah that's that's um that's what happened to me while reading it so I enjoyed the first and the second part especially the second part with the games because that just always catches me the third part was such a mistake and so I decided to give this three stars um I'm sad, honestly. I will keep this book because it's so beautiful, um, but, you know, this will not be like Hunger Games canon for me. I will always just reread the original trilogy and just keep this for the prettiness. So, unfortunately, I did not get around to the other three books I had chosen for the Oracle Path. I'm not really um, surprised because all of these books were quite big. I had hoped I could finish at least one more, but you know, life isn't that easy right now. So there's um, two books I'm currently reading. One is my audiobook on the come up. I have one and a half hours left, so I almost made it. On the come up is by Angie Thomas. It's her second book after The Hate You Give, so you've probably all heard about it. Um, it follows a girl called and she wants to be a rapper like her dad was and her dad was killed when she was quite small and yeah we basically follow her on her come up um, and I'm very intrigued to know how it all ends because so far I'm really enjoying it. I was hesitant going into this book that I would not enjoy it as much as The Hate You Give because I just feel like I, I don't really connect with rapping. It's just not something that I'm very interested in but this book definitely manages to be interesting also if you're not into rapping as a form of music but because it's... I mean the beginning is a little bit focused on that but I feel like as you progress in the storyline it becomes so much more and so yeah I'm really enjoying that and can't wait to hear the end of that <laughs> and then I will let you know how I felt um, in my next wrap up. And then the other book is The Two Towers by Tolkien. I'm currently rereading that with my partner. Um, we just started the second half of the book where we follow Frodo and Sam and my favorite Gollum. So that will probably take a little while longer. But there is a readathon going on for the Lord of the Rings books in July and August. So if you're interested, and I remember, <laughs> I will link some information about that as well. I'm not actively participating, but I will check out, you know, the group chats on Discord and stuff because I love these books. So that would be all. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I'm a little bit confused what to read next because um, there's no like month-long readathon in July. What am I supposed to do? But yeah, we'll see. I hope you enjoyed watching. Leave a like and a nice comment if you did. And I will talk to you soon. Bye!